So we just start to go with Spark ML. What are the things is available? We'll see with some hands on today. So before starting that, we just going to discuss about machine learning. What are the things you have learned, right? Can you tell me what are the steps you have learned? What are the things we have to focus before starting ML? Just give me the topic or keyword though. Data cleansing. Sorry. Data cleansing. cleansing. No, first data selection, right? Data selection. So data selection, how we are doing? So sampling concept we will be try. Mm, and the hypothesis. So this are we are trying to approach it. And then here on the data cleaning, right? So in data cleaning part, what will that? Missing values that I can use. Okay, it will easy to refer. Let's do data selection. Data selection will come with sampling hypothesis for basic reference I'm giving you. And then it will come with data cleaning. And data cleaning. Missing values and Outliers. This is what we have to do that. Once the data cleaning is over and then anyone guess what is that? Picture engineering, right? So in picture engineering, what are the things we have to do? This is your loan, right? Univariate, bivariate, and multivariate. So, what is the difference between univariate and bivariate? What it is? Can you remember? Um, just you learn right last week sessions everything is just going this point moving it is a sorry, major league okay the bit next fail and test so this is a split operation. So you are going to do it. You are going to split your data for training and testing. Correct. So training model. Sorry. Here it will help to find out for our underfitting, overfitting sample. Underfitting and overfitting, and then so 
and then what else? Okay, training model will try to split the data. Let's say, will not be anything doing anything. Model selection based on supervised and supervised. Supervised, unsupervised, and then it's suppose it's a non-linear, then we have to go with deep learning model. Okay, so this is the model selection process. Once model selection process is over, and you'll be going to evaluate the matrix. Model evaluation. So here we are going to scoring accuracy and then accuracy and then scoring accuracy and then tuning model. Model tuning to improve. Accuracy. This is how we are going to do it. Parameter, uh, so hyperparameter tuning is something we have tried and we will be improve it. And then, deploy. So, these are all the process. It's suppose you are going to do in machine learning, you have to follow. So, this all the process will be coming. It's suppose as a deep learning, feature engineering will not be covered. Other things, all the process flow will be followed. For one the machine learning part, supervised and unsupervised, you have to follow entire instructions. Okay, so once deploy the model, deployment two types is available. One is one time deployment. Or continuous deployment. Okay, this is the two way you can deploy a model and you can do it. So, this is machine learning process. Now, we are going to compare this with our Spark. Spark machine learning, what all thing we are going to do. Till now, any question? Any doubts or any question till now? Any question, guys? Hope no. Okay, so let me start with Spark Machine Learning. So in Spark Machine Learning, first we just notice the library. So there are two libraries available, ML, lib, and then ML1. In ML lib for RDD transformation and action, ML for the data flow. Okay, so this is nowadays not used. It is the main for main library. Up to two X of Spark question. And then the data frame ML will come to the prior primary one. On 3x. 
in future ml lib is a kind of library is going to duplicate instead of that only they are planning to go with ml so 3x we have confirmed we have planned to go in ml data frame libraries not ml lib. but in the beginning they have introduced rdd with the ml library only the difference between these two already i informed ml library will be following RDD transformations on action, but a YAML library will follow with the data frame on action. Just a simple overview. Are you clear this one? Any question on this? Guys? Are you? You, you could proceed. That's it. Okay. So this is just a basics. What is happening? From today, uh, demo also, we just plan to go with some ML library only today, okay? So the process flow here, here also the first three steps will come data selection, you know, very well the data and the data cleaning and feature engineering. In this feature engineering, Spark is mostly helping you. Data cleaning also available in Spark, you are doing here. And then feature engineering, you will be doing in different way. It's not the direct one. So here you'll be going to apply asset transformers and then from the transformers it will be following with estimators. From estimator it will be following with evaluator or matrices. Okay, I will mention in separate. Okay, so you know very well data selections using hypothesis testing and some other testing. You can do the sampling technique, everything you can use it. Data cleaning, impute around null values, uh, forward fill, backward fill, and uh, hyper IQ you are using to find out the outliers. That all you are doing it. After that, here transformers will come. We will talk about only our big data platform, sorry, Spark ML platform, important thing. So transformer is just processing. Reprocessing. Processing. Distributed. Okay, I forgot to tell you one more time. Type of the data. While, while you're going to get the data in SPA, that will be a dense matrix of data or sparse matrix. This kind of two types of matrix type in the data, once you divert it, you'll be getting it. And this data will come in under two local matrix coordinate matrix. Okay, they're all in detail, but uh, we don't want to confuse it right now. So dense matrix is nothing but everything will give you with as usual normal matrix. Just I'm giving you an overview. Okay. So if suppose I want to get the data 0, 0, 1, 2, 0, 3, 0, 5, 1. This is the actual value. This is normal matrix, which is called as a dense. But in sparse matrix, little different way, it will not be include that, uh, that zero elements. Okay, it will be remove the zero element and it will be giving as a kind of list to value. Total element is five element is available. And then from the five element, what are the places will be stored? This is the first element will be stored in the second index, right? And then it will be mentioning second one, I think three, and then two something. Just for the practice and understanding, I'm mentioning it. And what are the value we are going to pass it? So first element value is for one, two, three, five, one. These are all the value. So this is 
your index sizes sorry your data sizes value this is index this is your value if suppose i have mean number of matrix with zero dimensions more then dense matrix if you are going to prefer it take long time but spark matrix you can sparse matrix you simply do that thing it will be giving you so this is the represent of this matrix library total five element is available each places what are the data we have to sorry post it that information only will be provided so this is called as a your sparse matrix is called as a n n is a uh, non i cannot remember uh, but it's a non zero element matrix i think so okay they are calling like that <clears throat> so mostly in spark data frame will be following with ones as a sparse or dense matrix are you understand this concept any question in this no questions okay so we can go just for the it will come as a output for your spark the transformation or your estimator that supposed to use it you will get this output like this Return data type will be a matrix data type. Sometimes it depends on your selection also. Okay, so transformer is available. In transformer, we are going to transform the data, just like a one hot encoding. Mm, vector assembler. something you can do via your transformers okay that is the use of transformers next estimator assembler so estimator will help for your model implementation so in this model implementation you can apply all your uh, ml models like k means or uh, random forest mm, or something the logistic regression or something so everything you can apply as a estimators from estimator a value will come so in your evaluator is tuning the accuracy okay before saying that the estimator will come into another one is called as a pipeline Okay, create the stages between transformer and estimator. If suppose you want to transform some data from one content coding or vector assembler, you can do that. Once transformer is in, immediately you want to start with the estimator. So we can create a pipeline here and we can pause this transformation there and it will be executed. So we will see it's the example with the pipeline also. Okay. And then the evaluator will come. The evaluator will help to tuning the model and accuracy. Okay, this is the basics. You think you must evaluate estimator. Yeah. Finally, matrices. Matrices will give you scoring accuracy. So matrices will come before the evaluator also or after also. Okay, so this is the proof.
simple spark that's it this is the basic any question on this we are going to see some example now is yes, suppose no question here first we will see example in direct way and then we can go in pipeline model because pipeline model you may be confused some places so we will see some example in the basic normal way as machine learning model but in real time project they will be using pipeline model only because it will be improve your speed of your data processing and will give you fast output yeah somebody asked in chat Okay, so any other question? I think you can proceed. Yeah, Anand, any question? Yeah, actually, so please go ahead. This machine learning we can do in Spark as well. In yes. this scenario, we need to go with Spark or Rendeville. Uh, yeah. It is a different, uh, based on your data, right? If it is a distributed data, then Spark we can ap apply it directly. Mm -hmm. There are a lot of libraries, they will be important in Spark directly right now. And especially in 3x they have they have done n number of improvements okay. so you can use spark there because in normal what is happening you want to buy a cluster and you want to execute all your pipeline flow on there and you will be getting the output so you need a cluster at least right correct am i right correct so that cluster we have already in big data platform we have a huge number of data Directly, we can process it via Spark library and giving the output to them. If you suppose additionally you want to include anything, that is also possible. And how about uh, real time? I mean, the streaming data, how can we apply machine learning? Uh, real time data that you will be started you know the business problem in business problem instead of pandas you can directly using spark camera we are going to see that some uh, came in clustering right via spark today don't worry i will show you that uh, answer today okay in oh. some time you can see oh, uh, my question is uh, can we apply machine learning uh, on the streaming data A streaming data also possible but it will be a little wary. If suppose you are going to apply the streaming data, you cannot train it again. So already you want to train your model. On top of the model, you are going to apply your model and you will be finding the accuracy value. Because continuously you cannot train your model. So you have a sample data, you want to train it. On train the data, you are going to train the model, you are going to apply that value, whatever the streaming you are getting, right? That you are going to pass as a test data and you will be validate the accuracy. Maybe once the uh, algorithm is finalized and uh, accuracy is uh, fine, right? Then uh, it can be applied on streaming yes. data as well. Yes, like exactly. Okay. Yes. Because let's example, we will be take it out. You are getting the data continuously. We can go with some anomaly detection. Okay. So anomaly detection, what is happening? Multiple customers, they are processing their, uh, sorry, their uh, process via credit card or something. So you suppose it's a different manner we want to predict it. So we have existing data which will be processed already. Those data we will be going to give as a 
trained the sample data to our uh, model. So Spark model will apply as per our model and will give you some planned output. And directly we are going to use that output for our testing, right? Okay. It's already deployed that model. Okay. What we are going to do while streaming the data, what are the streaming input we are getting? We are going to deploy model, we will be calling that. And it will be predicted at runtime, it will give you the output. Okay, but it depends on that your seasons. Sometimes that data will be varying. So at the time you want to retrain your model again. That is a continuous deployment. Okay. Every three months or one year or six months, you want to retrain your model. You want to reapply your all the data cleaning part and then you want to find out. Okay. Got it? Yeah. Okay. So somebody asked me the question, evaluator and matrices. Evaluator is nothing but as a hyperparameter tuning like that, how you are going to improve your accuracy, that's it. Matrices, you are going to find out the scores like uh, sum of square errors or RMSC or something. Uh, what is that? Mm, some, ex some accuracy part of all your method, you can use it. That's it. Okay. Example, we can consider hyperparameter tuning. Like grid search or something, we can consider. Here, accuracy will be coming with SSC, RMSC, or something, whatever it is. Just for the example I'm giving. Okay, hope you are clear, right? Any other question? Okay, so no questions, everyone. We can go now with some examples. I just start the spark cluster. 